What is this? Noodles! Yay! Noodles! For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lana and I have been traveling for almost a year now. So today I'm going to be making a vlog about how I afford to travel and some budget traveler tips for those of you budget travelers out there. So far this year I've traveled to nine countries in total and two I have revisited. So I went to Malaysia and Vietnam more than once this year. I have truly had like the best year ever. I experienced so much, I met so many cool people. I went to hostels, I solo traveled, I saw things that I never thought I'd see in my life. I just I truly learned this year what it is that I want for myself and that is just to be happy and to experience life to the fullest and not be sat in a job all day where I'm complaining about how much this job sucks. So this probably sounds crazy to a lot of you and you're probably wondering how did I manage to do this lifestyle? Well I didn't just wake up one day and decide that I wanted to quit my job. Well yeah, I kind of did but it wasn't just that easy. I did have to do a lot of planning around that. So I had to work for a whole entire year last year. I worked two jobs. I worked as a nurse and then on top of that I worked a part-time job at a call centre. So I'd work sometimes about 12 to 13 hours a day. So I saved as much money as possible. I'm not that much of a spender in the first place as I have been taught to save money thanks to my mum. I made sure to save all of my money and only spend it on things that held great value or importance to me. So after all that saving, I decided to quit my job as a nurse with the plans of going travelling for three to six months. And I did originally plan to come back to New Zealand to work as a nurse again. But after travelling for so long, I had a really long and hard think about nursing and what I wanted with my life. And I come to the conclusion that I just wanted to be happy and I wanted to continue to travel because that's what made me happy. So I decided that I didn't really need nursing anymore to pursue my dreams. And at this time that I made this decision, it was about seven to eight months into my trip. So I had to come up with an idea of how to sustain this lifestyle of travel. I had talked to quite a few people on my travels about English teaching, so I thought, oh, this would be a great idea. Because with English teaching, you can actually teach online, which means that you'll be location independent. It seemed a bit crazy at the time, but I just decided to dive right into it and research it as much as possible. So I actually found out about this company called Data ABC, which is a company that I now actually work for. So now I teach English to Chinese students online and their ages kind of range from about 4 years old to sometimes 16 years old but usually they're in between. I work 3 hours a day and I work 5 days a week so I work Mondays to Fridays making sure that I get the weekends off. Pretty much during the day I can do whatever I want because I only work 3 hours a day. So the requirements for this job were not too complex. They were just asking for someone who is a native English speaker or a citizen from the countries of it can either be America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia or the UK. You have to have a degree of some kind, so it doesn't necessarily have to be teaching. So it could be like mine was nursing, and then all you need is some previous kind of teaching experience, which doesn't have to be too complex either. So you could be a coach, you could have trained someone at work, you could have been a babysitter or a nanny or just anything like that. If you have any kind of experience with children, then that would just be a perfect fit to get a job for English online teaching. Then also they ask you to have a TEFL or a TESOL certification. So I actually got my TESOL certification off Groupon and it was like five US dollars or nine New Zealand dollars for the course. And it didn't take me too long but I did kind of drag it out on purpose because at the time I was in Bali and we were traveling around. But it honestly would only take you a couple of days to do the certification. So you'll also need a one page listing of a CV which describes all the skills that I just said. There are companies out there that do longer hours than my company. Unfortunately, I'm not able to mention my exact amount of pay due to the contract, but Dada does pay 16 US dollars to 25 an hour. Um, all the ESL companies out there are kind of the same pay. So usually they're ranging from 16 to 20 something US dollars an hour. No, you do not need to speak any Mandarin or Cantonese. I personally myself speak no other languages apart from English, so you do not need to worry about that. And as I said, I have never done anything like this before, so you don't really even need to have that much skill or experience in teaching as long as you can speak English and you're confident in speaking to other people through a camera. The better that you do in your interview, the higher your pay will be. So because I was kind of a beginner and I was kind of nervous in my interview, I did get paid on the lower scheme of the 16 to $25 scale. And the best part is there is literally no lesson planning. So all I have to do is show up to my lesson each day and the whole PowerPoint is literally there for me to teach. So I don't have to do anything. There are plenty of companies out there that do the same thing. And I can just name a few for you right now at the top of my head. There's Q Kids, there's Say ABC, VIP Kids, 
there's so many others if you just research just a disclaimer for you guys this job didn't just fall out of the sky for me it did take me about a month to get this job i watched as many youtubers as i could that teach english i went on to pinterest i went on to google i just went on to everything to research how to be an english teacher because as i said i've never been an english teacher before so i don't really know what the hell i was doing <laughs> all i know is how to be a nurse so yeah i did do a lot of research and it didn't just come naturally to me but now i'm really confident and happy with this job i mean who else do you know who literally gets paid to sing, stay at home, and just talk to children for three hours a day, and travel the world. So, I mean, it really is the best job and the best fit for my lifestyle right now. Also, if you guys have any questions about the English teaching online, I'm more than happy to help you. So you can comment down below, or just drop me a message on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, now for the fun stuff. On to my budget travel tips and how I managed to travel for so long. Number one, do your research. There is so much information out there regarding flights, how to travel cheap, you can go on Pinterest, YouTube, Google, like Reddit, TripAdvisor, anything. You can just get any travel information that you want. So do your research before you go to a place and find out where you can get the best deals, what are the best areas to stay, and all that kind of information. Number two, be budgeted, but do not worry about buying the latest things. Delay gratification, guys. Say, if you say no to buying things now, then that means saying yes to buying things later. I mean, you could be spending money on going on a boat tour to see the clear waters in Kopeke, rather than spending your money on the latest makeup, shoes, or clothing. Invest your money in moments. The time is right now. Why invest your money in material things? You could be meeting people from all across the world and experiencing things right now. Number three is cheap flights. My favorite websites that I like to use is Google Flights and Skyscanner. Now, I personally love Skyscanner because you can just click on your departure and your destination can be everywhere and then it will list all the places that are the cheapest to go from your location right now. You must be flexible with your dates if you want to get really cheap flights. The more flexible you are, the cheaper the flights are. You can look on Skyscanner and they will show you the calendar of the whole month and the cheapest time of the month to fly. The more date specific that you are, the more expensive the flight will get. Also take advantage of living in places like Europe, America or Asia because the flights if you live somewhere like that are so much cheaper rather than, rather than if you live in New Zealand or Australia where we're so far away from everything that the flights are 10 times more expensive. Number 4 is accommodation. Now, for some of you out there, it probably seems like a weird idea to stay at a hostel, but hostels are literally the cheapest and the coolest places that you could ever stay. I have had, seriously, way more fun staying at a hostel than I ever have at stay at a, been staying at a five-star hotel. In a hostel, you can meet heaps of people, have events on each night, so there's heaps of social things you can do there, and plus some of them even have free breakfasts. <laughs> which is sometimes the reason why I choose a hostel, but that might not be the reason that everyone else does. But yeah, so if you stay at a hostel, you'll have the best experience ever. But for those of you who aren't interested in hostels like I was, there is Airbnb. So Airbnb, you can rent out a whole house, you can choose a shared room, kind of like a hostel, or you can get a private room. So with Airbnb, there is plenty of options there also. And if you want to check out Airbnb, I have my link down below, which has a special deal for you guys. And then lastly, there's Booking.com. Now, I personally always use Booking.com because you can filter it to see the cheapest accommodation available. And you can also see all the hostels in the area available. Make sure to set your reviews to 7.5 to 9. If there's anything less than this, you could get a shitty accommodation. So if you're interested in Booking.com, I have a deal linked down below for you guys. Number five is the cost of living. Now, this is something you might not always think about, but if you travel to countries where the cost of living is low, then it's going to be way cheaper for you. So you need to travel to places like Southeast Asia, South America, or Eastern Europe, and the cost will be extremely low. Whereas the cost of living in places such as Australia, America, New Zealand, Western Europe is going to be so much more inflamed. So make sure that you travel to countries where the cost of living is lower. And then you can spend way more money on eating out, going on day tours, and doing all those fun activities. Whereas if you go to places like New Zealand, then you'll have to budget and buy food from the grocery store and not go on those tours that you want to go on. On a side note of that, tourist areas are always way more expensive than local spots. 
So if you travel somewhere, try to look for the locals and ask them where the best places to eat are because those are usually going to be cheaper than the touristy spots. Number six, slow traveling. So if you think about it, the faster you travel, the more money you'll spend because you'll be jumping on a bus or plane or train and you'll be paying money on transport. Whereas if you slow travel and stay in a place for longer than two or three weeks, then you'll be spending much less money than opposed to if you move to a place every two or three days. The slow traveling is a great way to budget and usually you can get deals on things such as your transportation rentals or your accommodation because you're living in a place so you'll be spending less money. So you'll be grocery shopping and not eating out as much also. So keep that in mind if you have the time to travel for longer because then you'll save more money and you can see more things and you'll be able to experience the culture or the people and the community who actually live in these places rather than just seeing things as a tourist. Especially after traveling for a long time, it feels so much nicer not to have to unpack my bags every two to three days. Number seven, planning excursions. It's way more affordable to plan any excursion or day tour in the town that you're staying in. So don't book online because just know that if you book online it's going to be way more expensive than if you book in person at the place that you're staying. So things like buses and trains, if you want to book a bus or a train anywhere it's going to be cheaper at the actual train station or bus station. Even just go there a day before to see what times are available because certain times can be cheaper also. If you want to book a day tour for things such as like the Harlem Bay tour or whatever, walk around and walk to all those travel agencies and see what is the cheapest way to book it and who is offering the best deal because Trust me, you can barter your way down in Southeast Asia or just any country like that that you're allowed to barter, do it because they all bring the price down. Sometimes it's more affordable to rent your own transportation such as a motorbike or a car rather than to go on the day tours by yourself and make your own excursions for the day. So book in person and talk to the locals to find the best deals. Number eight is couch surfing and work away. Oh. Go out there and volunteer and this will cut your travel costs down significantly, trust me. I haven't done it personally myself, but I have met so many people traveling who travel this way. So what Workaway is, a platform that you can go on and you can work for people such as a hostel, a farm, or a family business, and they will put you up and give you accommodation, but all you have to do is work for four to five hours a day, helping them out, doing some tasks, whatever they need, and sometimes even they'll give you free food with that, so that will cut your costs down like crazy. Couch surfing. So couch surfing is a platform where you can stay at a local's house for free. Now the catch is that you might have to apply for this maybe a week or two in advance because it is a local as I said it's not like booking.com or Airbnb where you can just book it on the go. So you need to get to know this person and make sure that they've got availability for you and if it is someone that you want to stay at their house and they'll put you up on their couch or their spare bedroom or wherever and there you go you have it, free accommodation. And as I said I haven't personally done this so do your own research, check all the reviews and make sure this is something that you would want to do. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end of this vlog. I hope that you found it useful or helpful, especially if you want to travel like me. Also, if you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. And let me know what was your favorite budget travel tip that I told you guys today. And also, if you need any help with English teaching online, make sure to comment or DM me on Insta, and I'm more than happy to help you, as I said before. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye! So they're quite <laughs> Firstly, do your research. I cannot vent. <laughs>